PC Sonic, the heart of your system. I'm Neil Wood for Kit Guru here with Fantex at CES 2020. We've got cases to look at, of course. We've also got, would you believe, speakers and naturally RGB. There's plenty to get into. We're starting with the budget kit. We're starting with metallic gear and the two cases, Neo Pro and Neo Matrix. Neo Pro obviously has been robbed uh, without any shame whatsoever from the new Apple Mac Pro. Uh, it is significantly cheaper at a mere 59 euros 90 or 59 dollars 99. Let's hope to goodness that means 60 pounds. These are prototypes, so the front panels have been machined rather than injection molded. We're looking at those parts, they look interesting. Actually, I'm just gonna pull. So hopefully they'll be able to mould the part to be the same as that. Uh, there are some subtle points uh, to note here, which is that this black panel here has a shiny inside and matte on the outside. That will be uh, the final version, but the RGB, that is only in the prototype. The final version will be a dumb black fan at the front, or fans, plural. Nonetheless, really cheap. Also, pleasingly cheap, we have the Matrix Neo. Neo Matrix. Uh, obviously, this is a matrix of LEDs. This is a prototype, so the lighting is not quite as crisp and bright as we'd like because it's got a film over the front that's slightly diffusing things. Nonetheless, as a principle, this is, uh, well, you, you know the in-win uh, from which this has been uh, borrowed. Neo Matrix is going to sell for €99.99 .99 or $99.99, so let's face it, that's £100 in the UK. And as ever with Fantex, the lighting, is controlled from their own hardware or you can plug into the ARGB connector on your motherboard. This is basically it's a budget case that's perfectly competent with a single fan at the rear the two fans in the roof you should ignore them and it's got this fantastic lighting I like that a lot it's fun and the Neo Matrix thing I mean that's got to be a well let's face it it's taken from the movie isn't it? Moving around to liquid cooling hardware, we've got a couple of blocks for ASUS graphics cards. These suit the new ASUS Dual Evo RTX 2080, 2070, 2060, so they're specific to those graphics cards. And then we have the Glacier D120 distro plate, which, uh, as shown, goes at the rear of your case. I've previously worked with the D140, which is actually a different design, so this is not just a question of size. Obviously, 120 fan, however, the 140 extends down here, which is handy for taking a feed of off the bottom of the distro plate to go to the front of the case but it completely blocks a vertical GPU so the D120 is more than a simple change in size it's also a change in shape the D120 is coming at the end of January so imminently and that's going to be priced at 75 Perhaps the most unexpected products from Fantex this year, the Evolve Sound Mini, which is a pair of uh, small USB speakers, uh, obviously based on the design of the Evolve chassis, uh, in the plural, uh, priced at a mere 30, available in January. This apparently started life as an April Fool's joke uh, and has become a product. It's one of those things, if, if you make it and people express interest, lo and behold, it becomes a product. Moving up the audio scale, we have the Evolve Soundbar. Uh, this should be available Q2 2020. Pricing will hopefully be under 100. Uh, so you're looking at stereo speakers. Uh, the audio is actually quite impressive. There's a little point in us giving you a demo through the camera because it's going to sound absolutely crud through my mic if I hold it to the speakers. And if we move to the right, Luke, you can see we've got the stereo stereo setup. Uh, so this is your desktop setup now running closer to 200 pounds, euros, dollars. And now, of course, we can take more heed of the RGB-ness. Audio can be controlled over Bluetooth, which is currently at level 4.2, might be level five by the time this product is released. I'm guessing we're gonna see it at Computex. Fantex Neon is digital RGB strips that are currently available, but I had not seen them until today. So these strips here have all been added into the case, and it's this stuff here, uh, which is interesting in two ways, because the mounting mechanism for the strips are these plastic brackets, uh, so you can either have it straight, angled, curved, or whatever, and they have screw holes in, so you can attach them to uh, your motherboard screws, for example, or other mounting points in your chassis. Uh, so you can guide the strips wherever you want them, but the strips are entirely on show rather than being tucked 
uh, out of sight behind the frame as they often are if you're using, say, self-adhesive. Uh, so that's interesting. Also, you can cut them. So you connect them to the uh, standard Fantex connector. If you choose to cut it where I'm holding it, the part between the connector and my fingers will continue working. The rest, obviously, you'll be removing and won't work. So you can cut them to size. That should not be necessary because Fantex has come up with three packs uh, which are appropriate lengths for a motherboard, a case, or more, uh, pricing in the 15 to 20 pounds territory. So no great money. Obviously, the uh, idea is you plug into the Fantex RGB ecosystem. We do like our ecosystems. Enthu Pro 2 is the headline case for CES 2020. As far as Fantex is concerned, I'm actually going to disagree on this one, but we'll come to that in a second. However, you get a lot of hardware for a mere £130 Euros dollars, and they are claiming ultimate airflow. That part of it, I completely believe. What we've essentially got here is a hybrid design. It is fundamentally a mix of Lux 2 Stroke 719 and the beloved Pro M. Uh, we've got fabric air filtration at the front and when all said and done this is how half should have been done back in the day. There's an awful lot to like about this case including the fact you can have dual systems or dual power supplies, multiple drives. The permutations are pretty much endless. My only gripe with this case pretty much is it's big. However, if you want to pack in a load of hardware that is an entirely acceptable sin. I personally rarely build dual system setups, therefore I'm not so massively keen on this approach. To illustrate the size of this case, we first have a Leo for scale, and then we have the Banana for scale. It is a significant size, not enormous, but significant. And look at the options you have. So here we have dual power supplies, and here we have dual systems with the motherboard at the bottom in the vertical plane, which makes it much easier to install your secondary system. So if that's the kind of setup you want, there's an awful lot to admire about Pro 2. In the back of these cases, you can cram loads of hardware. So here we have the traditional cables hidden away, SSD sleds in this instance unused, there's the cable management plate, you can see the power supply. The other system has got a lot more going on at the back. In this liquid cooled setup, you can see there is a lot of hardware in the back. That is an Alpha Cool ST30 radiator, so the rad is outside the core chassis, the fans are inside. It's close for comfort, but it fits, and that pretty much is all that counts. But look, there's other little bits and pieces going on as well. They've crammed a huge amount of hardware into this chassis. The other reason this chassis is too large for me personally is because it can pack in a proper server or workstation grade of motherboard with dual sockets. That is out of my personal league. But look how much hardware they've fitted inside. As part of the claim to Ultima Airflow, Fantex is using fabric on the front as part of the filtration system. So it's very fine, it picks up loads of dust, however it allows huge airflow. And it also shows that uh, although this case has a certain traditional look about it, it is actually bang up to date. The Eclipse P400A in the middle is an existing design. Uh, the cases flanking it on either side are obviously based on the same design but are clearly different sizes. They are both coming soon. The P300A to the right is coming very soon. That is going to be priced at 60 US dollars, 55 euros coming in January. Color is satin black uh, with the mesh front panel we're expecting good airflow. Uh, temper glass gives you the aesthetic at the side and it will pack an ATX motherboard. And finally we have the Eclipse P500A. This is the chassis that's really caught my eye. Uh, it is based on the P600S that we've previously reviewed, did very well. It's got the mesh front panel, so A for airflow, so slightly confusing. It's called P500, even though it is, when all said and done, based on the P600. It is very slightly smaller than the P600, so it is not a P600A, it is a P500A. That's going to cause me confusion for months to come. The base model is going to be priced at one penny under 100, so 99.99. The digital RGB version at 130. And the size of the chassis means that you can pack an ET80X motherboard, vertical GPU, dual systems. And I've done this in the past, packed in loads of hard drives and SSDs and had space for many more. This chassis can do pretty much anything. If you look to the rear of the chassis in this build, you can see it's got the D140 distro plate. Uh, which 
gives you many more options when it comes to your build, but does mean you cannot put the vertical GPU in. So the build that Fantex has done here to show off the P500A, it's slightly familiar from previous shows, but that's a lot of hardware. Finishing up with the Eclipse P500A in white, Fantex is unusual. They do not charge a premium for white, so same prices for white as for black. Uh, to spell it out, if you buy the base model at $99.99, you don't get the RGB strip in the side and you get two black fans at the front. With the RGB version, you get three 140mm RGB fans, which can be obviously ranged at the front or two at the front, one at the rear, however you choose to do it. So that's a lot of extra hardware for a mere 30 euros, pounds, dollars. Impressive going. That is part of the reason why I am personally bowled over by the P500A rather than the Pro 2. I'm going to sign off between these two P500As because I like both of these builds. I can't decide which I like them more, so I'm just going to cover the odds. So we've done a tour of the Fantex suite at CES 2020. There's a lot to see here, but these cases I consider potentially to be winners. If you like this video, give it a thumb up, hit the bell button, subscribe, return, see more videos from CES 2020, and obviously buy a t-shirt.